Hello lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. In this video we are going to look at how to translate differential calculus into different coordinate systems. Woo! Yeah! So I want to really hone in on that word translate because that's really all we're doing. We're taking equations that we are familiar with in Cartesian coordinates, x, y, z coordinates, and we're just writing that same quantity in different notation. So that said, there have been a lot of people that have come before us that have figured out these equations. You don't need to memorize them unless your teacher tells you to, but that's what I want to focus on for this video is a conceptual understanding of where these come from. Um, but generally speaking, these are equations that you don't need to have memorized. Look them up, especially, you know, if you're using them for work purposes, they're in the book, they're on the interwebs on Wikipedia. So I think it's more important in this video for us to focus on an understanding of where uh, these equations come from and how we can kind of take our understanding of calculus and use it to apply to a new frame of reference. Okay, so that said, um, what we're going to do is we are going to create a generic coordinate system. Woohoo! Oh yeah! Very cool. Okay, so let's say I want to um, define an object in space, and at least in our universe, that means we need three different coordinates. Um, for our generic version, I'm going to use u, v, and w, which I am stealing from my book. And so for each of these uh, coordinates, they have unit vectors u hat, v hat, and w hat. Um, so these are orthogonal. In other words, each of these are perpendicular in the same way that our familiar Cartesian coordinate system, um, z, whoopsies, we got another z, we don't want another z, we only want one z. Oh my gosh, and a third z! I was saying it, so I wrote it. That's very silly. Um, so each of these three directions are perpendicular, which means that they don't overlap, and we get different directions, left, right, front, back, up, down, all different. We need all three, just like my 3D printer needs three directions to be able to figure out where it's printing. Cool. So these are perpendicular, um, and the unit vectors are functions of position, meaning that as these coordinates change, these also change. So in Cartesian, x, y, z stay the same. That x um, hat doesn't really change position, but in spherical, we have our direction r. Um, I guess that's, that's the direction r, and then r has an r hat. And as our vector moves around, uh, the r hat vector changes. And so does the theta hat vector unit vector, and so does the phi hat unit vector. Um, so our generic coordinate system, we leave that open to possibility. Okay, cool. So now let's say I have a point in this generic coordinate system, and this point uh, has coordinates u, v, w. And let's say I change this point by a teeny, teeny, tiny amount, an infinitesimal amount called dl. And I want to figure out um, what uh, this magnitude is and how I express it in this coordinate system. Okay, well, so my, my coordinate has changed, my coordinate u has changed by a tiny amount du. My coordinate v has changed by a tiny amount dv, and an infinitesimal amount. And my coordinate w has changed by a teeny tiny amount dw. And so um, I'm going to erase that so I have more space. And so now um, my infinitesimal displacement vector can be written um, generically like this. This is kind of a placeholder, this function f, um, where we have du in the u direction, and really I just add up all of these, um, these changes. Okay, so plus g, another placeholder, dv v hat plus h um, dw w hat. Okay, cool. Well, what's f, g, and h? They're placeholders in my generic system, but if we go back to what we know about the infinitesimal displacement vectors in other systems, if we have uh, our Cartesian coordinate system, we have dx x hat plus dy y hat plus dz z hat. 
So now we can compare the two and say, oh, okay, well in this case fg and h are just one because there's nothing in front of this dx, dy, or dz. Cool, pretty straightforward. And um, x, y, z. And if I have r, theta, and phi, my dl um, is uh, r, whoopsies, 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 dr, got ahead of myself here, r, r hat plus um, r, there we go, that's where the r pops up, d theta, theta hat plus r sine theta d phi phi hat. Okay, cool. Um, and so then in this case, my f is just one, there's nothing in front of this dr, my g is just r. Hey, wait, I have other colors, I can use my other colors. Um, so we have r, which is g, we have a one in front of this dr, which is f, and then h is going to be r sine theta. Cool, okay, so we'll table that, we're still going to need this, and what we want to do now is figure out, okay, well, if I have a scalar function, we're talking about gradient. Gradient's really interested in, in how these functions are changing over um, space or time, maybe both. Um, keep it simple and just talk about space. Okay, so let's say I have a scalar function um, in my generic coordinate system that depends on uh, u, v, and w. So it's a function of all three positions in this coordinate space. And I change my function, or my function changes a little bit. Let's say the temperature in the room and I turn my heater on and I wanna figure out how much does the temperature change in each of these directions. Well, so I can basically use um, my knowledge of calculus and say, okay, well, a tiny change in this function uh, can be expressed um, through partials. Um, so dt du du plus dt dv dv plus dt dw dw. Okay. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, this is going to be a little hard to figure out. So what I can do is I can say, hey, wait a second, this kind of looks like a dot product between um, del t dot my infinitesimal displacement vector, dl. Okay, so if I do that, then what I am going to get is um, the gradient of t in the u direction um, times, uh, da, 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 da. hold on, wait. Yeah, times f du. We're pulling this in from our infinitesimal displacement vector plus um, del t in the v direction times g dv plus uh, del t in the w direction times h dw. Okay, cool. And so now uh, we can compare the two and say, okay, wait a second. Um, these will be equivalent. This will equal this. Uh, when I define del t in the u direction uh, to equal 1 over f on um, the partial of uh, d t du. And similarly, it will be equivalent. I need to do it for the other two directions as well. So in the v direction, that's a u, not an h. <laughs> uh, oops, and it's defined, so it gets three little lines. Um, 1 over g, the partial of t with respect to v, and again, in the last direction, w defined as 1 over h um, dt dw. Cool. Okay. And so now we have created a formula for the gradient of t. Yay. Okay. So now we can say the gradient of t in our generic coordinate system is defined to be 1 over f um, times the partial of t with respect to u plus 1 over g times the partial of t with respect to v plus 1 over h times the partial of t with respect to w. And of course, as I'm writing this, I'm like, wait, I forgot the direction. So this is going to be in the u hat direction. This is going to be in the v hat direction. And that's going to be in the w hat direction. Yay. OK, cool. Um, yeah, sweet. And so now we're like, wait, okay, this is where f, g, and h pop in. And so if this was just our Cartesian coordinate system, these are all one. 
um, this becomes dt dx and x hat, dt dy and the y hat, and dt dz and the w hat. And if we're in spherical, then we're like, oh, hey, we just replace f with 1. That's pretty straightforward. 1 over g becomes 1 over r because g equals r. And 1 over h becomes 1 over r sine theta because that's what h is. Um, and then we just, you know, change these variables appropriately to r r hat, theta, theta hat, and phi, phi hat. Pretty cool, right? I love this. Um, so yeah, this is how we can come up with a generic formula for the gradient for any orthogonal coordinate system in three-dimensional space. Three, not six. <laughs> okay, cool. So I hope that's helpful. Um, again, uh, these equations you can look up. Um, my book has them in the front of the book. Da 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 da! Woo! There we go. Yeah, see, boom! Spherical, super fun. So they're kind of long, but again, don't fret, go slow, piece by piece, and just remember it's just a different way to write the same quantity. No big deal. You got this. Cool. All right, so I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you next time. Bye!